that there are two kind of key aspects. There are two kind of keys which are possible when it comes to a uh, wrap based application. One is called a uh, semantic key. The one is called semantic key. Now, what does a semantic key mean? So a semantic key means, for example, if I do have a, a key over here which says one, then one is something which is a primary key when it comes to a database table. OK, and uh, at the same point in time, that's also a, a primary key or I can say key information for my user as well. OK, that's why it is called a semantic key based wrap object. At the same point in time, there is one more possibility. OK, so for example, if I just go over here, then there is one more possibility called GUID or I can say UUID based key. Now, what does it mean that each time you are going to each time you work? OK, your uh, system will generate a key which is a good base key. So what is a good? So good is a kind of a random number. So I can say uh, you you would see what is a good. So for example, I'll just say generate a good online. You will see. I mean, uh, just an example just to show you. So here, as you can see, if I just go over here, you will be able to generate some sort of a good. So these are good. Now at any point in time you generate this particular good. Next time this same number cannot be generated because this, this number is being generated based on your current location, timestamp and n number of other algorithmic factors, which is never going to be true. For example, take an instance of like today's mm, uh, 12th of Feb, 935 uh, certain seconds, certain milliseconds into the morning. And this particular time is never going to get repeated anytime in the world in the future. OK, that's not possible. And that's why this particular key that gets generated will be uh, unique for each and every user. And that's next time I just say generate random good. You will see that OK, a random good is getting generated. So if I am considering that this particular field is being used as my primary key over here, OK, then this is called a good base key. Now the advantage over here is that this particular good key will always be unique. So you are not worried about like whether I create while I create a new entry, I have to determine a new key parameter. Instead, it will always be unique. But when it comes to my end user, he'll always have something that makes sense for him. OK, so for example, if I say that I do have a travel table, I do have a travel table which is having a good base key. Uh, I did not copy it, which does which is having a good base key, but for him ultimately at the travel tables key for him will be I can say travel ID this is something that you will be determining and that will that can be a one, two or so on and on. So which makes sense that OK, this is a travel ID. He will not say this hexadecimal key. I would OK uh, for anyone who want to refer the travel. So that's why wrap based application works on semantic key as well as good base keys. We touched upon the semantic key. OK, so the semantic key ideally allows you uh, creating uh, a, a key parameter, which is. Also a backend key which uniquely defines a record at the same time on the UI side as well for my end user also. That's a key. That's a meaning of a semantic key. There is something that we should be knowing. OK, now. The issue that we had right now, I guess some time back that we were not able to enter the key information over here. This is something that you. Can still overcome, so there are plenty of ways of doing that. Uh, maybe you can think of a let's just say. Uh, a determination which decide OK very early into the system that OK, what what all um, kind of. Um, what all parameters should be considered while you are defining a particular key parameter. So for example, if I say that I want to generate a new travel ID, what I'll do? You will blindly go and uh, ask the system to actually uh, generate that, uh, that particular key definition during the create and that's where the determination will come into picture. So we are not going to implement it right now because we are going to now learn few more aspects which are in the same direction of that of the unmanaged and then maybe we'll start with that. But for us at least to understand that what we can have is uh, the skeleton of it. So we would have in future the determinations which will say for example. 
determination and then this determination will just say that okay um, generate travel id that while a while a, a particular travel is being saved let's just generate the travel id so when i say whenever it is getting saved so then there will be something called a in, um, events on which you want this to get generated so if you just say then you do have two options whether you want to generate something on save or you want to generate something on modify so for example if i'm talking about if i'm talking about the primary key then it mo makes more sense when i am saving uh, generating it on the save but for example if i'm calculating the total price of something for example if i'm entering anything in the booking the total price is getting calculated onto the header so that should get generated whenever someone is modifying anything on the real time okay that's where the instance on say modify will also come into picture so i'll just say on save and on save but at what time so i'll just say only while the person is creating the record that that point in time this particular travel id should get generated so there is a meaning of a i can say a determination so a determination will help you generating certain thing at different different instance of an application okay and then different different instance of an application will allow you um, i can say generate that particular uh, dependent information at whatever uh, i can say life cycle layer you want so for example certain thing you want to get created or generated at the uh, i can say certain thing you want to get generated at the save instance certain thing you want to get generated while a person is uh, just uh, changing anything or i can say on modifying okay so those all the things you can consider over here okay so there is one important thing that you should be considering okay now another thing that we would also uh, look over here is certain um, I'll, I'll just say if I want to generate this determination, you would be able to see that how it gets generated. But the execution or I can say implementation of it is something that we'll be taking care in the next session. I'll just say add method. The moment you do this, you will see that a method is getting generated. Now let's just focus on one important thing. So as you can see here, each and everything is being generated as a part of a certain class. Okay. So this is my certain class which says that this is an abstract class which we define for the behavior. On top of it, then there are some sort of a LHC. I mean, these are local classes. Okay, so these are local class. I can say local handler class. That is the meaning of a LHC. So this local handler class contains each and everything that needs for the handling purpose. So now, as you can see, one difference you would be seeing over here is. Okay, I guess I have to save this particular thing as well. That's the reason. Because if you are saying that you are saving the class, the determination should all uh, the behavior should also be saved, right? Because the definition is not yet activated. That's the reason. Maybe you are getting an error. Now let's just say, okay, now I guess we don't have any errors. Okay, so now as you can see, <clears throat> unlike in old oops ABAP, okay, in unlike in normal ABAP classes, you would have seen that. I can have a class, then you can have a method. There can be a visibility section. So if you just go back, you will get a same glimpse of it that I can have a class. So whenever I do have a class, I can have a definition. I can have an implementation. Each class will have its own visibility area, public, private, protected. Same goes over here. Here each and everything you would see that, OK, they are very private to that particular business object. OK. But when you see the signature, right, you would be a bit confused that OK, earlier we used to have some sort of an importing parameter, exporting parameter. Here we do have that, but on addition, we do have this for determine. Another thing is that it says that it gives you the keys of this particular travel, generate travel ID. But I am not sure like what all things I'll get as an input and what all things I can pass as in my output, whether this method is having any importing parameter, changing parameter, what all things it does does it have? OK, so I want to see those signatures. So how you can do that? So for that, if you just go in over here in the ADT, you will have Windows Perspect, um, sorry, Windows Show View. OK, in the Windows Show View, you will just say others. And here maybe we would have an ABAP layer, something called ABAP Element Info. 
Okay, so this ABAP element info will help you in uh, deriving those information. So if you just say open, you will see that it's getting open. So for comfortable users, maybe you can also bring it down over here. Now, for example, I want to see okay, generate travel ID, which is a determination I created. So what will be my importing parameter? What is something that I can export? So if you just go in general travel ID, put a cursor on this signature, and now you would see that you can receive the key parameter as an input and as a changing parameter, you can also return the reported parameter of it. Okay, and here the signature would also be something different. Okay. So here you would see that generate travel ID is a method which gives you the key parameter. Now as a part of key parameter, it's again get type table for determination like this. So this is a signature of this key, but what all things this particular table will have. So you can click on derived type and you can say that it is having a draft flag which says whether these are draft or not and the primary key of it travel ID. OK, so these are all component groups which ideally identify each and every key parameter different differently. So we'll see uh, which all key parameters are there and what is the purpose of it. So there are totally four, I guess, percentage key, percentage TKY, percentage PKY, and there is something called percentage PID. That is also one of that. But we'll be seeing what all things are there and at what place which will, will make significance. So these are kind of a deep table structure you can determine, uh, see. These are type table, so it's a table which is having one flag called is draft and one flag called travel ID. Okay. And these are the information that you would be seeing as an input. So if you want to see that, okay, how that gets, um, I can say, ex executed, okay, you would be able to see that as well. Second, uh, in the, if you just go back one more step, here you would be saying that what all things you can have. So you can also have some sort of a messages. In case you are seeing that while generating travel ID, you want to give some sort of message be due to XYZ reason that a, number range is a valid number range active number range is not there or let's just say um, some database variable overflow or anything those messages you can report in the reported structure over here so if i just go over here in derived type you would see that okay for travel as well as booking so ideally a reported is a structure which only gets generated on the parent layer okay so you would see that z are your travel even though you are having a uh, i can say booking the reported structure will always be that of the ZRPO travel. Okay, and here you would see that you are having a travel and the booking and in each one of the cases, you would be able to give out the messages that, okay, there is an, some issue in my travel ID. So you would say, uh, you would set the flag on the element and you would give the message over here in the uh, percentage message and that message will ultimately be flowing to the output. Okay, so this particular message will ultimately show up on the UI going forward. So when we go with the message handling or I can say validation part, we'll also be seeing that. OK, so these are all the things which so here going forward, the very first determination will impl implement, I guess, uh, maybe once we complete the structure of unmanaged, we'll start with the uh, this particular determination implementation. But this is how you will be able to define and it can get executed at multiple places. So this is just to give you a hint on what was the issue with which we just faced some time back. So the issue was that we should not be able to, we'll not be able to insert the travel ID or I can say primary key instead. It should get generated via a determination. So these are we'll be doing it. And one more thing, determination validations. OK, these are the things that you are not required to pass to the behavior projection. So maybe this is something that you can also get as a question on your during your interview that when I say that I have to pass each and everything from my behavior definition to my projection, uh, should I pass each and everything? Uh, definitely no. So for example, whatever fields you are specifying, read only mandatory. OK, whatever determinations you are writing, whatever validations you are writing, those are the things that does not need explicit exposure. OK, that will be by default available as a part of your application. Any short of actions, OK, any short of such functionality, which is an action, be it a draft action or the real action, be it, for example, a create, update, delete are the action. Uh, for example, these are also action. If I define any custom action as well, saying, let's just say, uh, mark travel as a complete, okay, that um, something which I can also define as an action. Then those all the things need a, a specific mention in the C view or I can say in the behavior projection. 
but the determination validations does not need and this particular field uh, properties does not need a specific mention in the behavior projection that will be auto inherited in your uh, behavior projection. This is something that you should be knowing. OK. Any doubts till now? Uh, no, 